Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. Hope you all are doing well. Got a pretty cool tractor for you guys today. Now this is another DYT 3000, but what is unusual about this machine is that it is a Honda 16 and a half and it's not a engine swap. This one actually came on this machine and I did a little bit of research. I believe this power plant was only made for one year for these. So this is a pretty rare machine. Uh, there's plenty of DLT 3000s, but I've never seen one like this before. It has a dual pedal for the hydrostatic. So forward and reverse. It also has a control here uh, for uh, the automatic cruise control on here. And let's see. I think that's basically most of the additional features I've never really seen before. It does have a little bit different tread than I'm used to seeing. And it is the same on the front and rear. So it's a, it's a pretty cool machine. I believe this is a 2005. Now the story was behind this is that the guy I got it from had got it from his neighbor. He had planned on trying to work on it, uh, but it sat for at least the last year. He did have it under a cover, but he was actually never able to get it started. He said the neighbor was having problems. It would intermittently start and then he could not get it to start. And it was also the brakes were kind of locked up because it had been sitting so long. I was able to release the hydrostatic in the rear and get the brakes to free up a little bit so it does roll now. Um, I checked the deck engagement on here and it's getting stuck. So we'll have to see what's going on with that. But so far it looks like a pretty, pretty clean machine overall. I mean the tires, the deck, everything looks good. The blades don't look the best on it. It has a rear gas tank and has a little crack in the front end, which is pretty common on these. But I do have another, I guess, nose cone for these. So we'll see. Um, so first things first, let's get this thing pulled in the shop and we'll hook a jumper pack to it and see what's going on. Check the oil and uh, start troubleshooting. All right, got it on the lift here. Went ahead and took the hood off. Now, the guy did say that the first owner of this, he did buy it new and he had this maintained regularly, which it seemed like it. I mean, it's in really good shape. Uh, he said that he used ethanol free fuel. And we're over full, if you guys can see that. I'm not sure. I would assume on this stick it's just like any others with the hash mark, but it has a flat spot up to where well, like you can see that shoulder. Doesn't smell like gas and it's clean, so we'll try that for a little bit. I'll have to double check to see what the actual full is on this particular engine. But yeah, he said that he ran ethanol free fuel in here, regular oil changes, air filter changes, and kept up with everything on here. So, um, like I said, it's really clean. Seat doesn't have any tears in it, and it was under a cover. It does have a little bit of surface rust, but that's not really uncommon around here. Has the uh, OEM Honda filter on here. But let's go ahead and hook up the jumper pack and see what's going on with this thing. Alright, got the pack hooked up here. Got parking brakes set and the PTO handle is down so we should be good to turn the key. So this one has the, this one has like the built-in solenoid on it to the starter, which I think Kohler's sometimes have those too, but it's different than your regular like three post or four post solenoid. So let's see. <sighs> Okay, 
Connection looks all right there. All right, let's get, let me get my test light and voltmeter out and see what we're getting over here. All right, so right off from the jumper pack, we are sitting at about 12.99, 12.98. So now we'll go ahead over to the solenoid and see, I know we're getting power to it, but we'll see if we're getting anything through it. All right, and to the hot side of the solenoid, we've got 12.99, so we're good there. Just got it grounded to the valve cover. So let's see if we can swap that over. I think that should be now. Yeah, that's where that's where our voltage should come through to go to the starter. So let's bump this key. Alright, so I've got like 0.5. And then we'll check our trigger wire, which should be right here on the back. See if I can get this disconnected. Turn this key off. Okay, well I got the got my multimeter hooked up to the trigger wire now. And at this point, I'll just be able to go ahead and turn the key switch. So that's on. We're getting 1296. That's off. That's on. 1296. So we're getting 1296. So we're getting all the battery voltage out of the um, the battery and we're getting plenty of voltage to the solenoid so basically that's telling us that this solenoid is bad on here um, I don't know how much the starter is I'm sure it's a lot but I did see a while back there was a video from Terrell fixes all I'm sure if you guys are watching my channel you've seen his and uh, they do some awesome stuff over there he did like a on um, the starter that had an external one they had like a uh, basically like a piggyback solenoid that they put in and wired in with the existing one and <clears throat> he showed how to do it and it worked like magic so uh, maybe that's something we can try I've got to take a look at the video and see if I can cobble something together and maybe we can go that route because without starter we're not going to be doing a whole lot so let me take a look at that see what i can come up with and maybe we can wire up something on this starter and at least get this thing turning over and see what we got going on all right well i've spent a little bit of time trying to get this all sorted out um so there was a ground wire here on this machine that went to nothing it's just an open ground source so Basically what we're gonna do, I have a good four post solenoid. So we've got two posts in the back, two uh, main power wires. And how this is going to work is we hook the, let's see. So we hook the ground, we're gonna hook a ground and then we take our old trigger wire and put that on the other small post. Now I do need to disconnect the battery before I get going on this, but, and then we are gonna take the positive wire from the solenoid now, put it on this solenoid, and then take the other one and put it on to this post. And also we're gonna take a separate wire this is going to plug in on the old trigger wire um, on the other side here, and then that's also going to go to the hot side on this on this side. So let me let me get this all bolted up, and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. And we're going to see if this works. I mean, if it does, that would be awesome because uh, I'm sure this starter is very expensive, and maybe this could be a fix for someone else too. But I'd like to be able to hear this thing run and uh, or at least turn over see what's going on with it and see what all we got to fix on this machine so let me get this let me get this done I'll show you guys exactly how I wired it up 
All right, I had the jumper pack taken off so that I could work on all the wires and not short anything out. But like I told you guys, so what we've got here is a ground on one side. On the back, the other side is the trigger wire, the original one. Then we have the original hot lead going to one side. And then we have an additional hot lead now going out of the solenoid to the other solenoid. And then there's a separate like jumper that goes from where the old trigger wire hooked up and now to the positive side. So that's basically the setup he had. And we'll give this thing a shot and see see if this works all right so we got yeah, everything's still set from earlier the brake so key is on here we go oh boy might not have a good contact well that was awesome just gotta make sure i've got a good connection down here something wasn't touching all right let's try that again nice nice <laughs> that's awesome sweet we are cranking now uh all right well let's i don't know how bad the fuel is in here let's give it a little whiff test like i said he he said not the ethanol does smell a little stale, but not too bad. What do you guys say we take off? I guess we ought to check this air cleaner. Let me turn this key off. Oh, I can hear the... Let's see if you guys can hear it. This key keeps jingling. I can hear the solenoid turning on for the fuel, so... Let's see... Come on, I guess these come out. Have you guys ever seen one of these Honda 16 and a half twins before? I've never seen one, so this is all new to me. It's got like a metal cage on the top. Oh boy. <sighs> Filter is definitely a bit dirty. All right, let me get now I had some fuel over here because my carp, carp cleaner is empty. We'll just give a little uh, shot of some gas down in the throat here. This is uh, from Roger McDonald. Thank you as always for being an awesome person. Helps out the channel a lot. All right, so that's choke. This one's got a manual choke on it. We'll see if that's working. That's working. All right, let's give it a shot. believe that worked <laughs> it's like a piggyback solenoid to a solenoid definitely not gonna be leaving it like that though have to uh, have to get that all cleaned up and tucked away I'll run it like that uh, man wow let's see if it'll start right back up no. let's pull the choke again So good. Wow, unbelievable. He said it's 
been sitting since last year, so if it was ethanol free fuel, that's awesome. Some big tires on here. is awesome this thing sounds really good that's a pretty smooth running twin cylinder um i didn't expect that to quite work so quickly so where are we at um i guess let's see if this transmission moves we don't have a don't have a battery installed so we'll have to leave the jumper pack hooked up because it needs to have power for the solenoid on here. And I did tell you guys that the engagement lever isn't going all the way up for the deck. So we'll, we'll just see if this moves first and then we can address that. Because my guess is the same common problem on like all the LT1000s that pulley gets hung up. Or the arm. So... Sweet. All right. Well, guess it doesn't want to start without choke. need the air filter on there to help pull some of the fuel up too that is awesome sweet killer well that is awesome let's uh let's take this thing into the shop and drop the deck down on it and take a look more than likely We'll have to take it off to do the fix that they normally take anyways. Um, but that's awesome. That's really awesome. All right, let me take this back to the shop, and we will get started on this mower deck and see if we can't get this thing going. All right, well, on the way back over here to the shop, which was only like 30 seconds away, uh, I started spitting and sputtering, and I was looking at this carburetor. This one does have a, a bowl drain on it, so... Let's see. Let's see if we have any moisture maybe in the fuel. We'll just empty out the, the drain bowl here and take us a little sample. Come on. There we go. Alright. Take this over real quick and take a look at this in the sun. Might be hard to tell in this cup. Oh yeah, I see it. 
Let's see if I can show you guys on the camera here. It's hard to pick it up, but there is just down in that corner. You can probably see the difference. It's like yellow pretty much. There's a big blob of water down in there, so might be flushing out this fuel system a little bit. Make sure we get yeah, that's pretty it's a pretty good amount of moisture in there. All right. Well, got some contaminated fuel. It is nice though. It's got that drain on it. It's just got the set screw and a drain hose. All right. So let me see now that I've got that emptied out. I'll try to crank it up and see what happens. Probably I'll choke it again. Oops, break. Oh, come on. Now it's going to have to fill up the whole carburetor bowl again. still spitting and sputtering so probably have more water in the gas so I'll probably just go ahead and drain that again and disconnect the fuel line coming out the pump and try to pump that out until we get enough fresh fuel coming out and then we should have that flushed out hopefully there's not too much in the tank I mean, it did sound really good. You guys heard it. Initially, it was running smooth as butter, but there's definitely, there was quite a bit of, let's see if this settled at all. Yeah, it might be hard for the camera to pick it up, but there's quite a bit of water in there. So, all right, let me, we'll go ahead and work on the deck. And then after that, I'll start working on that fuel system. All right, so we got the mowing deck off from here. Now, if y'all have seen these before, um, any of my other videos have LT1000s that are all the same as far as pulling the deck off. You can leave the front arms on here or not. I took these off, so you just got those two mounts. You have pin here, pin right here. You gotta take this one off, and then you've got a clip for your engagement cable here, and then one on top of here. So when you pull your cable, um, up on the dash this is supposed to move all the way to the full back position which ends up opening up the brakes on the spindles and you can see this one is hanging up hard so what we're gonna have to do is take this nut loose right here and it's a carriage bolt so it just has the square um, shank coming through there so you can just take that off with an impact. 
I'm also going to take the springs loose on here for the brakes to relieve some tension. That way I don't have all that tension on the, on the arm as well. So let me go ahead and take that off from there and then I'll just show y'all what's going on and what I normally do to alleviate uh, all the issue you have with the binding in this part of the deck. All right, I went ahead and got that pulled off. Um, just got the pulley that you can move out the way. There's a big thick washer underneath and then I pulled out the carriage bolt <clears throat> but basically this one does not look bad a lot of times what happens is this uh, cutout right here will get a sharp edge and it'll make it to where there's a little roller on the bottom side of each one of these brakes the other one comes over here and they will get hung up on here a lot of times you can just take a grinder and smooth all this out now this all does look very smooth on here, but there's a lot of corrosion underneath. So what I'm gonna do is basically get a wire brush. I'm gonna clean up this whole plate underneath here, clean all this up, and I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit of grease on there because you don't wanna over grease it because then you're just gonna be putting, uh, you'll end up collecting sand and dirt and all that stuff in there and wearing stuff out. So. I'm going to go ahead and clean all this up. I'll put a little bit on there and then I'll show you guys after it's reassembled how smooth it should operate. All right, I went ahead and blew off as much as I could on the mowing deck uh, just with some compressed air. But I did go ahead and basically put a little bit of grease on the plate. I did sand all that down. Um, I also put a little bit of some uh, penetrating spray on the pivot here for both of the brakes and also just a little bit of grease on the rollers on the bottom but you can see now nice and smooth as soon as you retract this back your brakes open up let the uh, spindle spin and then when it retracts puts the brakes on them I'll probably work it just a little bit more to make it as smooth as I possibly can but that's basically all you need to do on these and your mower deck should be moving nice and smooth with the PTO engagement. So let's hop back over and try to drain out the carburetor bulb one more time and maybe take the line off and pump some out of the fuel pump and see if we've got more water in the tank and hopefully if it's just a little bit we can just clear it out and uh, go from there. All right, I've got the <clears throat> mowing deck back on and I did pull the engagement arm a couple times just to make sure everything was sliding smooth and it was. I've also gone through and pumped out a few times on the fuel pump. Uh, first couple times I did get some more water. Uh, the last sample I took did not have any water in it. So I'm hoping that we've got the tank cleared out um, if there is a little bit more in there, I guess what I'll do is I'll just keep running it a little bit and then drain in the bowl, make sure we get it absolutely clean, but let's go ahead and fire it up, test out the deck and uh, make sure everything functions as it should. changing out the blades but I'm also gonna probably pull the mowing deck back off and get that sanded 
and get a new coat of paint on here as well but where are we at we've got I still need to check on that oil level on here because to me that seemed high maybe that's the way this stick is supposed to be set up um, if we have any more moisture in it I will take care of that as needed but overall the engine runs great and I do need to basically disconnect this and see the piggyback solenoid and see if maybe I can mount it up here on the top or maybe here on the side I think that some of the solenoids for these on like the Briggs and Stratton's actually come right here I think that's what these holes are for so maybe we can mount it up and make it look as factory as possible and I have a chute blocker and a um, side discharge chute that I will put on here but yeah so far transmissions nice and smooth we'll test out the cruise control um, in the meantime I think I'm gonna stop here for today but I'll pick back up in this video for you guys and show you as some things progress on here but overall we got it up and running driving mowing and uh, I think this is gonna be a sweet machine so let's uh I'm gonna hop to it and let's make some progress. And here's an update. Got the deck off again and pressure washed, prepped, wiped down, cleaned, everything ready for some paint. I've got some quick color gloss black. I'm gonna hit on this, but overall the condition of this deck is in really good shape. Just nice coat of paint and this thing is gonna look like brand new. So I'm gonna get this knocked out and then I'll be working on the everything, getting the mower cleaned up and show you guys when that's all prepped. All right, well here it is. Went through and cleaned, buffed, polished, normal stuff, taking the headlight lenses out, cleaned up all the plastics. You guys saw me painting the deck earlier. We're getting everything prepped, put a couple coats on here. I did take the stickers off and reapplied those. I've got the belt diagram but everything looks really good. I forgot to mention before too that the deck belt and the drive belt on here were in really good condition, almost brand new. Um, let's see, show you guys since you last saw it too. I went ahead and engine bay has all been cleaned up in here. Went through, blew out the air filter really good. Now you guys saw the piggyback solenoid I did, like I was talking about earlier in the video, I ended up using these two mounting holes and it's on the back side. So the only thing really you see here that doesn't look quite factory is just this wire right here. And then there's a little jumper wire going over there. But everything else looks good. Uh, I had a good use battery here. This one's from October, 2021 and uh yeah this thing just looks sharp looks really good the uh, cruise control um, everything works i'll show you guys here in just a sec but only thing that was kind of a bummer was that surface rust on the dash but there's really not a good way for me to sand it all down uh, and mask off the lettering so i may just run it the way it is but i did also go through i greased the front wheel bearings and the spindles on here so all the steering is greased, um, cleaned, you know, everything underneath, top to bottom. Went through, cleaned up the rear plate. But yeah, this thing looks super duper nice. I didn't have the rear caps for it, so I took them off another one that I had. And uh, yeah, so um, everything's done on it. The oil was good. Um, I've got like a little extension on the drain hose. I need to take that off because where I was purging the uh, little bit of water that was in the fuel. But I think we've pretty much got this thing dialed in. We'll go ahead and crank it up and we'll do a little test run on it.
really clean. It's just that tiny little bit of surface rust, but yeah, this thing sounds awesome. I may just end up leaving that nose cone on here with the crack. Um, other than that, I just got to change out the blades and make sure the deck's level. And this thing should be ready to go, so crank it off. All right, so I really appreciate you guys tuning in as always. Got tons more content coming up. This thing turned out really nice and I'm excited about it. It's uh, pretty unique with that Honda 16 and a half twin. So, uh, you know, this was a fun one, but had a few problems. We got it all taken care of and this should be a solid mower for somebody. Um, but yeah, so I think we've got this one dialed in. So on that note, let freedom ring, let this small engine sing. I'll see you guys next time.